الذين يتعلموا دينهم ما يتفقه في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهل هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهل كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم وان يتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهل هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهل كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم وان يتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهل هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهل كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم وان يتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهل هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهل كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم وان يتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهل هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعه جهل كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم وان يتفقهوا في دينه 
كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهلا هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهلا كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهلا هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهلا كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلم دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهلا هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهلا كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلم دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهلا هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهلا كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلم دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهلا هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعهم جهلا كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلم دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه 
عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهله هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلف من جميع ان يتفقه في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعه جهله كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهله هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلف من جميع ان يتفقه في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعه جهله كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينه كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهله هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلف من جميع ان يتفقه في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعه جهله كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينهم كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهله هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلف من جميع ان يتفقه في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعه جهله كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم؟ كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم؟ يتعلمون. يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام: من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين. قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون؟ انما يتذكر اولو الالباب. جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينه. كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهله هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلف من جميع ان يتفقه في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعه جهله كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينهم كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهله هذا واجب 
لأنك مخلوق لعبادة الله ولا طريق إلى معرفة هذه العبادة ولا سبيل إليها إلا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا أن يتفقهوا في الدين وأن يتعلموا ما لا يشاءهم جهل كيف يصلون؟ كيف يصومون؟ كيف يزكون؟ كيف يحجون؟ كيف يأمرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر؟ كيف يعلمون أولادهم؟ كيف يتعاونون مع أهليهم؟ كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم؟ يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاة والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين. قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون إنما يتذكر أولو الألباب. جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينهم. كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه. عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهله هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعه جهله كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينهم كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهله هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعه جهله كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون انما يتذكر اولو الالباب جميع المكلفين يتعلموا دينهم ويتفقهوا في دينهم كل واحد من الرجال والنساء عليه يتفقه في دينه عليه يتعلم ما لا يسعه جهله هذا واجب لانك مخلوق لعباده الله ولا طريق الى معرفه هذه العباده ولا سبيل اليها الا بالله ثم بالتعلم والتفقه في الدين الواجب على المكلفين جميعا ان يتفقهوا في الدين وان يتعلموا ما لا يسعه جهله كيف يصلون كيف يصومون كيف يزكون كيف يحجون كيف يامرون بالمعروف وينهون عن المنكر كيف يعلمون اولادهم كيف يتعاونون مع اهليهم كيف يدعون ما حرم الله عليهم يتعلمون يقول النبي الكريم عليه الصلاه والسلام من يريد الله به خيرا يفقهه في الدين قل هل يستوي الذين يعلمون والذين لا يعلمون النور انا ام سوري عبد العزيز ترانزيشن انتو ار وي جود طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كفروا بربهم يعدلون وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بشر وأنذر لا خير إلا دل الأمة عليه ولا شر إلا حذرها منه فصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهداه إلى يوم الدين نسأل الله جل وعلا أن يبصرنا بالحق وأن يمن علينا بالالتزام به والثبات عليه حتى يتوفانا وهو راض عنا اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وقلبا خاشعا وعملا متقبلا اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا تجمعا مرحوما وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل فينا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم إنا نعوذ بك أن نضل أو نضل 
أو نزل أو نزل أو نظلم أو نظلم أو نجهل أو يجهل علينا اللهم آمين All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him. We worship Him. We seek His assistance. We seek His tawfiq. We pray to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach us that which is beneficial to us and to give us the tawfiq to apply it. فَإِنَّهُ مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقِّهُ فِي الدِّينِ اللهم فقهنا في الدين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما Tonight is the night of the fourth of Rabi' of Jumad al-Awwal for the year 1439 since Hijrat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which translates into uh, January 20th of the Gregorian calendar 2017 I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal to make this night a blessed night and all to make all the brothers and sisters who are with us physically in this masjid, Mubarak, Masjid al-Huda, and those who might be tuning in live to make them blessed in themselves and in their families. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our reward when we are done here is that it will be said to us, you go, you have been forgiven. Allahumma ameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to say, and do that which is good and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us sincerity in the sayings and the deeds and accept from us all the good that we do Allahumma ameen um, with that said uh, a couple of uh, quick if you wish uh, logistics before we get into the halaqa and I do apologize again for the delay in starting this halaqa um, uh, which leads us to the first uh, uh, quick announcement uh, today, by the grace of Allah Azza wa Jal, we're actually doing something new k with respect to how we stream live our halaqa. Uh, if you remember, um, or if, as you know, as a matter of fact, uh, we've been streaming live for quite some time now uh, to spread the knowledge so that it reaches more uh, ears and more eyes and more minds uh, in the hope that we, this will help us to or educate ourselves um, and uh, to, to fully submit to the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. But um, to reach more, uh, if you wish, audience or bigger audience, not for the sake of uh, numbers, we don't care about numbers, but we're care we want to meet, uh, meet or to, we want to make this uh, knowledge that is derived from the book and from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu readily accessible and available to more people and the more we can actually put it in the in between the hands of people the better it's and then it's up to everybody right so uh, today inshallah uh, like I said we're actually using a new uh, way of streaming as a matter of fact we're not currently streaming to three different networks at the same time as opposed to streaming to YouTube alone we're now streaming to YouTube we're streaming to Periscope and to Facebook live uh, hopefully it will benefit may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this daris make this halaqa this gathering and all the coming uh, 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 gatherings uh, beneficial to us and to everybody. Allahumma ameen. Uh, we're also, uh, as you know, we've been using, uh, uh, the, or the internet that we were using before was giving us problems as well. We're using a new uh, internet as we announced actually the last time, a couple of weeks ago when we last met. Uh, we're using cellular uh, connection. Uh, hopefully it is working good. Um, and I do actually want to ask if there is somebody who is online uh, watching us, please do uh, give us feedback. Uh, you know, this is an ongoing process. We'd like to improve it if possible, inshallah, in any way possible. Uh, I, I hope that the stream is working for you um, and it's good. Uh, but if there are some feedback or, you know, if there is issues or feedback, please let us know. Uh, and also, I'd like to, if any of the brothers uh, in here, uh, if they can check for us how the stream is coming along. Um, as you know, as we make those announcements before the uh, before we start with the actual halaqa, uh, I hope that it's working, inshallah, uh, well. Um, that's one. I can cross that one off. Number one. Uh, the second one is the second announcement, or uh, is that um, also we wanted to uh, you know improve uh, this uh, gathering, uh, as you know, especially during the winter. Uh, where the duration in between Maghrib and Isha is a little bit long duration, right? Um, so 
what we decide, uh, we actually take a break, as you know, right? We take a break and we also, uh, uh, you know, bring food, uh, you know, this 20 minute break, we bring food and dessert and tea to everybody. So we wanted to actually kind of, um, you know, organize this and manage it in a better way in addition to the cost associated with the internet. So here's what I'd like to ask everybody. We thought that we need 10 brothers who are willing to, ble to pledge either $30 per month, that's $1 a day. If you cannot, that's perfectly fine. Whatever you can afford. Allah Azza wa Jal knows and will reward you as if you actually pledge more or you're paying more. Whatever you can afford. If you can afford $15, you know, uh, you know, pair with another brother, split it in half, or you know, with two other brothers, three, uh, each one ten per month. That's perfectly fine. I think we have about ten brothers. Uh, so, I'm sorry, six brothers so far who pledged thirty dollars. We're looking for another three or four brothers uh, to either pledge thirty dollars or partner with somebody else. Um, this cost, or th I'm sorry, this uh, these pledges, whatever money you contribute, brothers and sisters. It will be solely used for the cost of this halaqa, nothing else. And Brother Mushtaba Barakallah fi, he actually volunteered to be in charge of this. So he'll be actually collecting the money, he'll be actually paying for the food and other expenses and the internet and whatnot. He'll keep track of all the expenses. Uh, think about it as a sadaqa jariyah. Yani imagine, I don't want to say anything, just think about it as this is a knowledge that we're spreading across the globe and this benefit of the benefit of this knowledge will be ongoing will keep going people will come across YouTube will keep will come come across Facebook and will listen to this knowledge and it's an ongoing can you imagine the great benefit that you reap from uh, this money from the sadaqa that you are making for the sake of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala sadaqa jariyah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, reward you tremendously in this life and in the hereafter and remember what rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith in the great hadith that idha mata ibn adam in qata amaluhu illa min thalath if the son of adam dies that's each each and every one of us me and you when the son of Adam passes away or dies, then his or her deed will come to a stop except in three ways. Sadaqatun uh, jariyah, which is a uh, you know, sadaqa or something that is beneficial on an ongoing basis that keep benefiting people, uh, well of water, uh, you know, uh, school, whatever it is that you do that people keep on reaping the benefit from. وَعِلْمٌ يُنْتَفَعُ بِهِ And knowledge that keep benefiting people. And this is actually part of it. If you're helping to spread it, that also uh, comes under that. وَوَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ يَدْعُوا له. And a righteous son who keeps invoking Allah Azza wa Jal to shower him with his mercy or her with his, with his mercy subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's one. If you're interested, if you want to contribute to that cause, uh, please talk to Brother Mushtaba. Like I said, he's uh, in charge uh, of all of that. The third one, uh, third uh, quick topic, if you wish, or uh, uh, is that, wallahi, I missed this halaqa. I do miss, wallahi, I you know, miss this halaqa very much. As you know, we've been, we stopped for almost four weeks. It wasn't intended, subhanAllah. Uh, if you do remember the last two Saturdays of uh, 2017, um, we had to stop, or we actually canceled it because there was a halaqa or a series, or a seminar uh, uh, of ilm uh, happening at a local masjid. Uh, so we canceled the two halaqa and then subhanAllah I had to cancel two more Saturdays which I didn't think was, was going to happen uh, due to my uh, 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 laziness and uh, uh, subhanAllah and my shortcomings and you know subhanAllah the, 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 the busy life and the st studies, uh, the courses, the shari courses that I'm taking I also have I was behind on studying and I have some six exams, subhanAllah. I did three of them and three more to, uh, to go. Um, so I had to cancel. But you know, subhanAllah, uh, this became as part of my uh, life routine that I do actually look forward to it every single week, subhanAllah. I do, and subhanAllah, uh, I don't wanna, I'm not trying to uh, 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 put you on the spot, brother, but brother Idris, subhanAllah, wallahi yesterday, Yes, yesterday we met after Salat al-Jumu'ah at another masjid. 
And I, uh, and he said, uh, I, and I told him, we'll see you inshallah tomorrow. He said, I am actually looking forward to it. I can't wait. You know, I don't mean anything, but you know, I, subhanAllah, this gave me such a uh, good feeling about it that subhanAllah, look at the brother, how he's eager for knowledge, how he's actually missing this halaqa, this gathering. And this is what we always say. Ya akhwan, al-ilm, knowledge has sweetness. Why? Because this is where it starts. Oh, we all want pleasure of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, don't we? We all want to earn the great favor, Jannah, seeing Allah Azza wa Jal, all of the great reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. But how do we earn this? How do we get there? Right? It's not secret. It's not arbitrary way. It is actually Sirat al Mustaqim, and you're not even gonna get there. Wallahi, none of us will get there except by the tawfiq of Allah Azza wa Jal first and then learning the beneficial knowledge. So that when you do, when you say, when you understand, it's based on knowledge. It is based on crystal clear reference. Right? Ud'u ila sabili rabbika bil hikmati wal maw'idhati al hasana. And also Allah Azza wa Jal says, the ayah, Subhanallah. Uh, anyway, ala uh, basira. Al-aya. Shul aya Abu Abdullah. Ala basira tin. Ana wa man ittaba'ani. The beginning of the aya. Qul hadhihi ahsan barak. Naam subhanallah. قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ اتَّبَعْنِي Right? So I have to call and I have to work and I have to do and I have to say based on basira, not based on ignorance. Right? Because otherwise Allah Azza wa Jal may not accept it. Right? We want to do based on basira. طيب. Um, so, you know, this actually gave me uh, this, uh, like I said, it actually made me feel so good that, and I hope this, the, uh, the rest of, the, uh, of you, the brothers and the sisters, they're feeling the same thing, that they actually look forward to this gathering like I do, like, every, like uh, the brother, um, that we actually make this as part of our schedule. If it doesn't happen, then we feel something is missing, right? There's something as if something is missing, important of our life. It's a, uh, like, a kind of a... Uh, uh, an appointment or a meeting with uh, this knowledge with, uh, that brings us closer to Allah Azza wa Jal on a weekly basis that actually opens our eyes and uh, uh, make or, or help us draw closer to, closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And should we err? And we do err. None of us is ma'asoom. Should we err? And we do err. And we all are that person. Me first. And I know my shortcomings and I know my sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. Uh, uh, you know, if we should err, and like I said, we do err, we repent to Allah Azza wa Jal and we seek His forgiveness and we keep trying and we keep doing that. We keep striving to do that until we go back to Allah Azza wa Jal, right? We keep, we strive to stick to the path. If we deviate by sinning, by wronging ourselves, then we uh, realign and this ilm actually reminds us of the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal, of the uh, uh, punishment, severe punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal, which should make us scared and fearful of Allah, of the punishment of Allah Azza wa Jal. At the same time, if we err, we don't lose hope. Because we have, we hope, we are, we are hopeful in the reward for, of Allah Azza wa Jal and His forgiveness, right? And this amal in Allah Azza wa Jal and hope in Allah Azza wa Jal is what actually uh, make, keeps us, uh, you know, striving and keep, keeps us, uh, keep doing uh, until we earn the pleasure of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and I pray to Allah azza wa jal to be pleased with us Allahumma irda anna and may Allah make us among those who he said about or whom he mentioned by saying رضي الله عنهم وردوا عن I don't want to take much more without further ado inshallah I want to get started and real quick like I said since we're doing something new uh, is everything going fine? is the stream going good? A little lagging, choppy? Okay. Yeah, I think the internet maybe is not able to keep up, uh, subhanAllah. Well, we'll audio, audio, is coming. audio is coming okay? Yeah. All right, well, that's, uh, that's one thing that I need to actually work on and improve. So the internet, we need to... 
maybe the next, maybe next Saturday, brother, if you can, I don't know if you're able to come. Maybe we can try the Verizon uh, hotspot, inshallah, if this works better, then we can change. You know, we can switch if Verizon performs better. I know Verizon has a better network in general, but I don't know, it, sometimes it depends on the location, uh, but maybe we can try it, inshallah, next week and see how that does. Is it too bad or is it okay? Lagging. Lagging? Lagging, yeah. Pretty bad? Pretty badly? Okay. No, oh, okay. Khair. Khair. All right, well, that's one thing, inshallah, we'll, we'll work on, uh, inshallah ta'ala. We're actually uh, uh, recording uh, offline as well, so we'll, inshallah, replace the, the file. But khair, I think it, the internet it maybe is uh, a uh, limiting factor. Khair. Well, if we switch, we're going to have to stop the streaming. It's a long story, so khalas, we'll, we'll keep going, inshallah, uh, because we want to benefit, bi'adhanillahi ta'ala. Type. With that said, inshallah, uh, like I said, we're, gonna, we're, we're picking up where we left off the last time. And the last time, for those who were with us, we actually started talking about or commenting on this 80, statement number 83. Again, we're commenting on this text of Aqidah called Al Aqidah al Tahawiyyah, uh, titled after its author, Al Allama, Al Imam Abu Ja'far al Tahawi al Hanafi, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, and this text of Aqidah al Mubarak. We've been commenting on it uh, statement by statement uh, uh, for those who were with us and are familiar with our halaqa. Um, so we actually, last time we commented on this uh, statement 83rd or 83, uh, number 83, where Imam Abu Ja'far said, uh, The English translation of this is, in the lake or the pond, al uh, which Allah, or with which Allah, the Most High, will honor him, will honor him, yani will honor Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with it, as a relief from thirst for his ummah. Yani Allah azza wa jal is honoring Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with this pond as a relief for his ummah from thirst, like we said before, um, uh, is true. And we said in this statement is actually a great statement and a great uh, part of our aqeedah, aqeedah ahl al-sunnati wal jama'ah, that... Uh, from the matters of the unseen and the events that will happen on the day of resurrection, Yawm al Qiyamah, right? It's unseen. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us about it that uh, from the events of Yawm al Qiyamah, that uh, there is a pond. Allah Azza wa Jal honored Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by uh, 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 giving him or by honoring him with this pond. That, uh, as an honor to him and to his ummah alayhi salatu wassalam and that this is haq he said it is haq meaning that it is true it is something that we believe in it is part of al iman al wajib the mandatory iman the mandatory belief that we should have right because it is a matter of the of the unseen and allah azza wa jal has honored with it rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his ummah now the reason I mentioned that this is from the matters of the unseen, and if you do remember, we talked about this, that how do we approach, what is our methodology of understanding the matters of the unseen? I know, I keep repeating that, and I will keep, I will keep repeating that. Please don't get bored. Because I want this to actually become so clear, and I want you to be so confident and so comfortable with this, so that if you meet somebody, who says otherwise, you should be able to explain this. Being a matter of the unseen, right? It means that we don't do ta'wil. We don't explain it according to our own opinions and our, our own imagination. We explain it exactly based on the apparent meaning of the text. Right? A ta'wil, which we talked about, which some groups use, and they call it ta'wil, it's actually distortion. It's not ta'wil. It's distortion and twisting of the meaning, right? They call it ta'wil. It's actually misrepresentation and it's distortion. All the matters of the unseen, we treat them exactly the same thing. Which is to believe in the details exactly as, ha as they will relate to us in the Quran and in the Sunnah, right? So we affirm this hawd and we affirm the description of it as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, without actually starting to imagine, and you'll see what some people did with their imagination 
and it led them to actually deny al -hawd. They said, it, it is not possible, it is impossible. We're going to see uh, toward, you know, a little later afterward how they actually reasoned with their own mind, with their own intellect, and then they said, well, wait a minute, we cannot believe this. It, it is not a physical thing, because it doesn't make sense. And we'll see this, inshallah. So this is why we say it is a matter of the unseen. Don't try to imagine it with your own, how it is shaped, and it doesn't make sense. Where is it, right? Don't actually try to build picture and you know, imagine it with your own mind, because we're not, we're not going to be able to grasp it. We affirm it as it is, on the apparent meaning of the text as it has been relayed to us in the authentic hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and according to what Allah Azza wa Jal uh, told us. طيب. And we said that this is actually a part of the aqeedah that is so evident in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that some of the scholars have said about 50 and some other they said they actually the number of sahabi who actually narrated a hadith that talk about the pond have reached actually 80 Sahabi. So this reached the level of Tawatur. There is absolutely no doubt about it. It is so evident and so uh, 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 you know, the evidence to it and the dalil to it is so overwhelming. And not only that, some of the greatest Sahaba. Yani we're talking about the best of the Sahaba. We're talking about Abu Bakr, Siddiq, Umar ibn al-Khattab, Umar Umar ibn al-Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. And some of the fuqaha al sahaba are those narrators of those hadith, hadith that talk about al hawd That is why we have absolutely no doubt about it. And that is why Imam Abu Ja'far is saying it is haq. It is haq. Because it is so evident in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tayyip. He, Imam Al-Tahawi, he said, Akramahu Allah Ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal honored with this pond, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we said that he told us, Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, that there is for every prophet, there is a pond, which Allah Azza wa Jal honored that prophet with it. So every prophet is, on, when we say that, uh, when we say that Allah Azza wa Jal honored Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with a pond, that doesn't mean that he is the only prophet or messenger who is honored by a pond. But every Nabi, لِكُلِّ نَبِيٍ حَوْضًا As it has been uh, conveyed from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is in uh, Sunan al-Tirmidhi. And the Imam al-Albani judged as Sahih. Classed it as a Hadith Sahih. طيب. So Rasulullah Sallallahu in addition to the other messengers and the prophets alayhim salam they were all, uh, they are all honored by a pond for their, for their ummah. We also said, or Imam Abu Jafar said, notice, غِيَاثًا لِأُمَّتِهِ Right? This honor to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for what purpose? Specifically, غِيَاثًا لِأُمَّتِهِ which means that it is a relief for the ummah. Relief from what? Relief from what? Relief from the fear, relief from the anxiety that people will be experiencing, right, on the day of resurrection, when they are gathered. We said that when Allah Azza wa Jal resurrect every human being, when people are resurrected and brought back to life, and they will be gathered in the place of gathering, al-mahshar, right? And they will be in this mawqif, which is this place where they wait until the judgment starts. And this day is so severe. And this day is so fearful. It's full of fear. And it will be so heavy on people. And the weather will be so severe and it will be so hot. And will people will, will feel so much anxiety that in the end they will actually run out of patience and they will be, will be unable to wait any longer. And they will obviously, because it, and it is so long, because we imagine that Allah Azza wa Jal told us that a day is like 50,000 years. يَوْمًا كَانَ مِقَدَارُهُ خَمْسِينَ أَلْفَ سَنَةً One day is equivalent to 50,000 uh, years. So you can imagine how long the waiting is and how much people will be waiting and how anxious they will be. When they are in such a dire need, and they will be so thirsty, right? They were brought to life, 
and they're waiting and waiting and waiting in this weather and severe weather and uh, the sun will actually come so close and people will be so, uh, so hot and, and, uh, and the situation or, or the circumstance is so severe, people will be so thirsty. Allah Azza wa Jal honor the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam like He honors the, the believing, the believers of every Ummah, of every messenger by a punt for their Prophet, including Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And Allah Azza wa Jal will grant them access to this pond where they will drink from it when they are in the most dire need. When you are in a dire need, that is why He said, غياثاً, from Al Ghawth. And you know al ghawth al istighatha. When do you make istighatha? You make istighatha when you are actually in a dire need. It is not just a regular need. Sometimes I may need, a wa may need, may need water. And I can say, can you bring, brother, can you please bring me water? Right? I can, I'm not actually like dying out of thirst. Right? I can wait. I mean, even if he doesn't provide it for another hour, that's still fine. I can go on for a few, you know, few hours. Al ghawth or al istighatha is when you are actually about to die. That's it. You are about to yani, perish. It is such a dire need. This is when Allah Azza wa Jal actually comes uh, uh, and provides this relief to the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as ghiyathan to the Ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We said that the evidence to it from the Quran Possible references is where Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna a'tayna kal kawthar. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, again, I'm now I'm, I'll start to go quickly because this is something that we already covered. So I'm not going to go into the deep, deep details that we did last time. But I'm going to quickly go over this. We said that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the hadith where he explained this, he said, or there are multiple, ex, multiple hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In some of them, he said that uh, this al kawthar is actually... Uh, the water or the, the river in Jannah that actually supplies water to the Hawd, to this Hawd of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there are two pipes that supply water from this river of Jannah into the pond of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Allah Azza wa Jal has promised him. And in the Sunnah uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like I said, there is actually uh, uh, yani, uh, not possible. We said about the ayah, it's possible reference because there were multiple explanations. The scholars have deferred in their explanation. One of them is that it is a reference to this river that supplies al hawd But in the Sunnah, there are tens of ahadith, like, like we said, that reach the level of tawatur, mutawatir, that talk specifically, clearly, crystal clear that reference al hawd right? So it is 100% evidence to this how that Allah Azza wa Jal uh, honors Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with. As a matter of fact, some of them, they talk about some of the description of this how what it looks like, right? And some description, we're going to go quickly over this uh, as well. And what is, uh, what is the greatest indication about this is that Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned it so many times. Mentioned al-Hawd. So many times, it's not just one hadith or two, 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 twice or three times, and several sahaba narrated it. As a matter of fact, one of the sahaba, he said that I heard Rasulullah sallallahu mentioned it many times. He said, I don't say once, I don't say twice, but I heard it from him so many times. And there's one sahabi. And this is one sahabi. One sahabi is saying, I heard it so many times from Rasulullah sallallahu let alone the rest of, the rest of them. Type. Uh, in those ahadith, Rasulullah Sallallahu described this pond to us. And this description, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, we should actually take it as something uh, beneficial in the sense that when something is described to you, what is the effect of that? It makes you long for it. When you know about it more. Yani imagine the difference between being told, us being told that there is pond, full stop. End of story. We still long for it, right? We can pond, oh, mashallah, you know, this is honor to us. But when you know more about it, don't you feel like you long more to it? I want to drink from it. I want to be rewarded by it. I want to be among those who will be honored to drink from it. Don't you, don't you, don't you agree? So the more you know, the more you feel longing to it. And this should actually excite us and refresh us and you know, bring our energy level more higher so that we can do better and better and more and try our best 
to earn this great favor and this great bounty and the greatest fadl of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. From what we learn from the sunnah of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's shape. Anybody remembers what we said about that? Like I said, this is something that we've already talked about. Anybody who can remember? I know it's been four weeks, but I come in. It's square. Its shape is that the, uh, it, it, the, the angles of it are, uh, 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 what do they call it, uh, 90 degrees, you, squ uh, not square, but you, right angles, right angles. And he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, that the uh, sides of it, each side is the length of it, is the distance that uh, you, you cross in, uh, in journeying for a full month. And we said when we talk about journeying for a full month, the reference is what? A missile? Airplane? Right? Super, super, supersonic jet? It can actually... No, this is not what we're talking about. We're talking, the reference in here is the distance that a camel journeying at regular distance, because even a camel can actually race, right? We're talking about the distance that a camel uh, crosses by journeying at a r normal speed for a full month in each uh, side of it. So it is square, uh, and the distance of each side is a journey is like the distance journey uh, distance crossed by a camel journeying for a full a full month so you can imagine how big it is also we said its place where is it from the sunnah of the prophet ﷺ, we learn about where is it where it is anybody remembers it is on earth but which earth the earth that will be replaced that will replace this earth like Allah Azza wa said, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَّارِ Allah Azza wa tells us that on that day, an earth will replace this earth. And likewise, the skies will be replaced with other skies. On the day, and this is the ayah of Surah Mu'minun. صح? Surah Al-Mu'minun. يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ No, no, I'm sorry. This is Surah Ibrahim. Surah Ibrahim, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ وَبَرَزُوا لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ On the day when the earth will be changed to another earth, and so will be the heavens. So its place, or the place of the pond, is on the other earth that will replace this earth. Also from what we learn is about its containers that you drink with. You know, the, ves or the, the, the vessels or the, uh, you know, the, the, container, the water containers that, you, that people use to drink from it. We said Rasulullah Sallallahu compared it to the stars of the sky. And we said from this, this comparison, for what purpose? We learned two things. By comparing them to the stars, it tells us about its number. You can imagine how many stars there are in the sky? Countless. So you can imagine how many cups or, or containers there will be around this pond that people can drink with. That means this actually also, what is the effect of this as well? When you think about it. This should actually make you feel relieved. Because this means that we're not going to have to wait in a long line and forget it by the time we get to the pond, right? It's not a long line. Everybody will be able to drink immediately. No waiting, no crowding. Everybody will be able to find a uh, cup to, to drink from. Because their number or the, those uh, uh, cups are like the stars. And you can imagine how many stars there are. Also from this, this, from this comparison is that this means it is gl they're, they're glowing, right? The stars, they glow, right? In the, in the, during the night, you can see them. You don't actually have problem seeing them. Likewise, people will be able to see those, those cups, right? They will be glowing and, radi uh, and, and the, the radiance will come out of, out of it. Type. Uh, also from the description in the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu is the color of the water and the taste of the water and the smell of the water. Anybody remembers? More white than milk. Sweeter than honey. And it will smell better than musk. Allahu Akbar. This is what Allah Azza wa Jal is promising us. 
honoring Rasulullah Sallallahu and honoring his ummah. And I would pray to Allah Azza wa to be among his true followers. True followers. Not everybody who claims to be a follower is a true follower. But we pray to Allah Azza wa to make us among his true followers who will be granted access to drink from it uh, and rewarded by it. Type. Also, uh, from what we discussed about this is when does it happen? We said, when does it occur? This event, when does it happen? We said the scholars have actually disagreed, but the most uh, strongest opinion based on the evidence is the opinion that this happens before crossing over Sirat, which is the bridge over Hellfire. This happens before then, right? Uh, and the reason being, uh, uh, that because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this a hadith where he described this pond to us, right? He said that, uh, that he will actually see certain people who will be pushed away from it, from, will not be able to drink from it. And then he will say, Ya Rabb, O oh Rabb, O oh Lord, these are my, these are ashabi, ashabi, right? And then it will be said to, the, to him, إِنَّكَ لَا تَدْرِي مَا أَحْدَثُوا مِنْ بَعْدِكَ it would be said to him, to him alayhi salatu wasalam, you don't know what innovations they made after you. And then they will be taken to hellfire. So this tells us that this happens before, right? This happens before that. Also, from the, from the, uh, uh, yani the disagreement of the scholars uh, is that does it happen before the scale and before Allah Azza wa start judging people and weighing their deeds? Right? And judging people, or does it happen afterward? The strongest opinion is that also it happens before then. It happens before then. Yani before Allah Azza wa Jal comes, a coming that is befitting of His Majesty, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and before the scale is established and set up, and before the weighing and judging of the people, and before the records and the books of, of people uh, uh, fly to them. Right? And some people will take it with their right hand and will be proud of what's in it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among them. May Allah make us among the people of Yameen, of, of, of the right. And the others will be actually taking it with their left hand and will actually hide it behind, behind their back because they will be ashamed of what's in it. We seek refuge in Allah Azza wa from being among those. So uh, the strongest opinion is that this also happened before that. Why? Because we said that people will be so thirsty and they will be so anxious, so they're still waiting, right? So this means that this is actually before judgment starts, right? And this is when they are in this dire need, and this is when they are so anxious that Allah Azza wa Jal honors Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his ummah by providing this relief, ghawth, ghiathan, he said ghiathan, which means ghawth to this ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to extinguish their thirst, right? And to bring peace and so that they, are, they don't feel anxiety and they don't feel uh, uh, fear. Type. Also from what we talked about is that, um, uh, from the matters that relate to this, is that we talked about that some people will be pushed away from it. Some people will be pushed away from this pond. And we said that this pushing away, right, that people will be denied drinking from the pond, can be divided into two types. There is a general pushing away and there is a specific pushing away. By that I mean, general pushing away is that pushing that happens by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself to people he knows and those and also another pushing by other than him Alaihi Salatu Wasallam who it will be, they will be denied access to this pond. The ones that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will push away are the people from other nations. People from other nations, other than his, will be pushed away. Why? Because there are two reasons. One is that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is compassionate with his ummah. And he shows his compassion and he shows his mercy with them by actually only allowing them to drink from that pond and nobody else. Only, them, only people from his ummah. That's one. Second, 
also as an honoring to the other messengers and the other prophets. Like we said, other messengers and other prophets also will be honored by their pond, which is specifically for their ummah, for their nation, respective nations. So he pushes push them away so that they go drink from the pond of their messenger that was sent to them. And the believers of those nations, the believers of those nations will be able to drink from the pond of their prophet that they believed in or who they believed in. So he wants to actually honor those messengers that his people drink from his pond. So every believer drink from the pond of his messenger that was spent or his prophet that was sent to him and to his nation and he believed in him. Clear? That is the general pushing. There is also specific pushing and that is the uh, pushing that it will be said or it will be said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they are not to drink from this pond and we seek refuge in Allah azza wa jal and this is when he will say my companion, my companion not the sahaba themselves but these are people that uh, will be pushed away he will recognize them from his ummah but they will be pushed away and it will be said to him that you don't know what they innovated after you so he will say suhqan uh, suhqan Yani, uh, uh, yani, too bad, too bad, right? And they will be pushed away and they will be denied uh, drinking from this uh, pond. Type scholars, uh, and I, you know, I'll finish this in a, in a minute, inshallah. I, the food is here, right? Okay, so inshallah, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll break, uh, we'll take a break for the, uh, 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 and refresh our uh, bodies, inshallah. But let me just finish this last thought and then we will resume after the break, inshallah ta'ala. Type from the discuss or the argument or, or what the scholar have said with respect to this specific or, or uh, uh, specific uh, uh, pushing away uh, from the pond is that it will cover those people who are so in other in other words who are those people who will be pushed away specifically right and it will be said to him alayhi salatu wasalam that they innovated after you who are this who are they right what cover what what, who are covered by this description? The scholars have said that this covers everybody or anybody who innovated those major misguiding innovations. Those innovations that actually deviate so much from the deen of Islam. For example, like the innovation of a rafid, rafida, the innovation of sabaiya, the innovation of al khawarij. You know, Al Khawarij, who actually deviated so much and they brought so much, so much misguiding innovation into the deen. Al Nasiba, who actually hated uh, Ahl al Sunnah and hated uh, 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 Al al Bayt, and they actually uh, took them as enemies. All of these, and any p uh, person who innovated in the uh, yani understanding of the Aqeedah and in the matters of the deen that are misguiding innovations, all of them are covered by this. They will be actually rejected. Also from the people who will be rejected are those who actually, when Iyadhu Billah committed riddah, yani they rever reverted back to al-kufr, rever reverted back to disbelief of Iyadhu Billah. And from those also al-munafiqeen, those uh, 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 hypocrites, they will be also denied drinking and they will be denied relief uh, and drinking from this pond. Also from, uh, uh, from those who will be actually denied are those who lie on Allah Azza wa Jal in his deen. Yani those people who actually uh, intentionally lie about Allah Azza wa Jal and try to change it either by giving fatwa or by talking about Allah Azza wa Jal without knowledge or by actually you know, following their desires, whether it is for you know, a, a financial benefit or otherwise, right? And they obey those who actually lie about Allah Azza wa Jal in the, for the purpose of changing this deen. All of these are also, uh, will be actually denied. Like Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in this hadith related by Imam Ahmad, he said, Sayakunu badi umara, faman saddaqahum bi bihim. وأعانهم على ظلمهم فليس مني ولست منه ولن يرد علي الحوض After me there will be rulers and rulers here doesn't necessarily mean those who govern but this could be scholars they could be people who are in charge who have some kind of authority right 
or you know, uh, or uh, social authority or uh, or governance. Any person who has some authority, and whoever believes in their lies and helps them in their wrongdoing is not of me, and I'm not of him, and he will not come to me at the hout. So this is a reason for being denied and pushed away from drinking from this pond. Uh, so this, be, you know, believing those lies, believing in those lies, and be helping them are... out in their lies and misquoting and, and, and changing the deen of Allah wa and uh, uh, helping them in their injustice, all of this is a reason to be forbidden from drinking from the pond of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So all of this is uh, 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 part of those, or, or th these are the groups of people who will be denied access. Let's take a break, inshallah, uh, at this point. Um, we're going to be talking more about uh, what are the... We all want to drink from this pond, right? What helps us? What, what, what should we do? What are some of the causes, the asbab, in this dunya that we can do now that will guarantee us, that will actually help us to actually be honored by this drinking from the pond? This is the uh, next topic. And then afterward, we're going to talk about some of the groups and their belief in al how they deviated with, with respect to uh, uh, our understanding, understanding of Ahl al-Sunnati wal jamaa and then, inshallah, if we get time, I hope we do, after we come back, we're going to start Shafa'ah. Uh, so let's take a break, inshallah, 20 minutes, if we can get started, and then we'll come back, inshallah. Fadal.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم أما بعد uh, so inshallah we are going to continue our discussion of uh, our belief in الحوض حوض النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الذي أكرمه الله تعالى به غياثا لأمته وهو حق حق طيب so where we left off uh, before the break is we said each and every one of us brothers and sisters should actually be keen to be honored by this right we talked about what it is about our belief about how it is actually ghawth right we're going to all be through that we're all going to go through that we will be resurrected we will be in the mawqif the gathering we're going to be fearful we're going to be all of that i want to be honored by this this is a great bounty from allah azza wa jal that comes at the right time when we are in a dire need this is something the fear and this you know and the the, the feelings are unim, are unimaginable to us at the moment right so this is an honor i want to be of them so what can i do now so that i can guarantee that to myself to be what what is there anything that i need to be uh, to avoid is there anything that i need to do because i want to drink from it it's a great honor from allah tabaraka wa ta'ala for the prophet sallallahu so this is something a very important thing and brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that this is actually an important discussion. If you remember when we started this uh, aqidah, uh, this halaqah of aqidah, we said it is not theory. It is not ink on paper. It has a lot of implication on our... And here is a great example of that. It is not a matter, it shouldn't be to any one of us, that it is just a matter that, oh uh, yeah, I believe that, there is hawt for the Prophet And then what? Is that it? No, it has implication. It, it should actually get reflected on my deeds. Right? Because this should, I should be longing to it. I should be striving to drink from it. But what can I do now? Before I pass, I, I, I die. Before I leave this world. Right? Now I have my opportunity. This is dar al-amal. I want to benefit from it. But what can I do? Because this drinking from this hawt, and being allowed, permitted to access it and drink from it, right? Like we just saw, it has a sbab, it has reasons, right? There are reasons to be able to be allowed and permitted to drink from it, and there will be people who will be denied. I don't want to be among them. I want to be among the ones who will be allowed to drink from it. And this should be a concern for every Muslim, for every muwahid, that he's thinking, how can I drink from it, right? And to be keen about that. For one, one of the greatest things that you could do is not to innovate in the deen. Because we just saw that what will be said to Rasulullah that innaka la tadri ma ahdathu min ba'dik. You don't know what they innovated in the deen after you. Right? So this innovating, innovation in the deen and bringing into it or taking away from it that which Allah Azza wa did not permit, did not allow, did not legislate is one of the great, greatest reasons that people will be denied drinking from this hawd. And innovation is, the meaning of this innovation is that do or say or to uh, believe in something that was not at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because any type of i'tiqad or understanding of the matters of aqeedah, and we're going through all of that, or any type of knowledge, or any type of deeds that were not at the time of Rasulullah they are not part of this deed. Right? And doing this, meaning that we are innovating in this deen. And it is not, it shouldn't be haq. Or considered haq. Type. So, the right aqidah and the right understanding of the aqidah and the right deen is what was the practice of Rasulullah and his companions. Their understanding and what was related to us from the practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his practice of this deen is what actually the deen of Islam should be. And this is what we should practice and do. So any person who brings something new into it, innovate, that which was not part of it, is no question about it, is actually covered by إِنَّكَ لَا تَدْرِ مَا أَحْدَثُ مِنْ بَعْدِكِ You do not know, Ya Rasulullah, what they innovated after you. And that is why the scholars the scholars have said that 
those who innovate in the matters of Aqidah, and we've seen those groups who misrepresented the matters of Aqidah and brought understanding different than the understanding of the Sahaba and what Rasulullah taught us, right? They said ta'wil and changing and things which are actually changing of the deen and changing of the Aqidah. All of this, the scholars have said that these groups are actually part of those people who will be denied. We're talking about, for example, those Rafidah. We're talking about the Sabaiyya, al Mu'tazila. We're talking about, uh, for example, uh, al Khawarij, uh, uh, al Kullabiyya, and you name it. So many groups. We've talked or mentioned some of them and what they believe. To the rest of the groups who are actually commit ghulu, they go to extremes in you know worshiping other than Allah Azza wa Jal, calling in invoking other than Allah Azza wa Jal. All of this is from the innovation in the Aqidah. And these people, people are on a grave danger. They risk and jeopardize to be actually among those who will be rejected and will be denied. And what is actually the duty of every Muslim and every Muwahid is to actually, like we said, to be careful and keen to actually be rewarded and honored by this honor from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, which is to drink from the hawd of the Rasulullah Because imagine, brothers and sisters, one sip, one sip from that pond and after that, you shall never feel thirsty ever. Allahu Akbar. That doesn't mean you don't, uh, question. But we know that there are all types of drinks, very sweet and tasty drinks in Jannah. So how come you say we're, we'll never feel thirsty, but there are drinks to enjoy in, in Jannah. So how do we, comprom how do we uh, compromise or, or you know, bring the two understanding together? We drink out of pleasure, not out of need. We drink in Jannah. There are rivers of water and, and milk and honey and even, uh, and even uh, khamr, but good khamr of Jannah. Not the khabith of this dunya, but it will be good uh, khamr in, in Jannah. It will be very good tasting. We drink and eat out of pleasure, just because it is pleasure, not out of need to drink. Not that I am thirsty, I want to drink, but I drink out of pleasure. This is from the reward of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So it is a great honor from Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Like we said, especially at that very dire time, when we are so thirsty, it comes at the right time too, as a ghawth to us. Type from also, from what we can do to guarantee drink, drinking from that pond is to purify our hearts from cheating and from resentment to other Muslims and other members of this ummah, especially the Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This select group or generation of this ummah, the best of this ummah, imagine there are groups now who hate them, who curse them, who even judge them as disbelievers. This is from the greatest reasons you will be denied access to al hawt Purify your heart. These are Sahaba to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of this nation. Loving them is actually from what actually is a reason to be among with them, to be actually uh, gathered with them. And Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "Anta ma'man tuhib." You will be with the, with whom you love. I love Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and I love the Sahaba, and I want to be with them. And those who hate the Sahaba. For a fact, they will not be with them. They will not be with them. If they hate them, they will not be with them, wherever they may be. And we believe they will be in the highest levels of Jannah. They will not be with them. So, cursing a Sahab or Sahaba, or you know, especially in general, or all of them, or most of them, except very few handful, right? Or uh, talking about them badly and criticizing them. <clears throat> and resenting them and hating them, all of this is from the reasons people will be denied access to this pond and drinking from it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us with the leader of this ummah, Rasulun al-Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and his companions, Radwanullahi alayhim ajma'in. Also, from the reason or from the reasons that we could do or from the things that precautions that we can take to be to be able to drink or allow drinking is to actually stay away from lying on Allah Azza wa Jal in His deen. We, we need to be from al-Sadiqeen. We need to actually 
uh, be sadiq with Allah Azza wa Jal and not claim about the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal and about Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala that which is not from the deen. To lie about it or change or, you know, uh, or, or legislate in it that which is not from it. All of this is like we saw before from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu He said, I am clear from, I'm innocent from that person and he is, yani I am not from him who, who lies or helps injustice. I am not from him and he is not from me and he will not be that person who will not drink from this hawd. All of this are reasons. So that's why brothers and sisters, this matter of al hawd is a great matter and a great uh, topic of al aqidah and that every Muslim and every person should actually tr strive to understand this deen and comprehend this deen the right way and then comprehend al-a'tiqad and have the right a'tiqad, al-a'tiqad al-sahih and to learn and to uh, understand and comprehend this sharia ah, and not to help any person who is trying to change it or to lie or to modify it in any way, shape or form or help them either by sitting with them or helping them or providing them with any uh, financial or any other type of helps on their injustice May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us well-being and, uh, and safety in this life and in the hereafter. And what we should remember is that one of the greatest reasons or one of the reasons that throw people the most in hellfire is what they say, is this tongue. The matter of the tongue is a grave matter. It's not an easy thing and people take it lightly. Whatever you say with, th with tongue, like uh, Rasulullah sallallahu told Mu'adh in the long hadith, Mu'adh ibn Jabal, he said, وَهَلْ يَكُبُّ النَّاسَ عَلَى وُجُوهِهِمْ أَوْ قَالَ عَلَى مَنَاخِرِهِمْ إِلَّا حَصَائِدُ أَلْسِنَتِهِمْ And Rasulullah Wasallam was answering Mu'adh and he said, does anything else, as if there is no, nothing else, does anything else throw people on their face in hellfire, والعياذ بالله, or on their uh, nose uh, in hellfire, except what they, what they utter with this tongue, as if there is no other reason. So that tells us about the importance and the gravity of what we say and what we utter uh, in this, with this tongue. So the person should actually be very careful about being sadiq and being truthful to Allah Azza wa Jal and not lie and always stick with that which is haqq uh, and not to lie on, on Allah Azza wa Jal or his deen. Um, also from the reasons that guarantee you drinking from the pond is to actually try your best to stay away from the major and minor sins. Staying away from the major and minor sins, and I say also minor sins, and not be regular on them. Not be regular on sinning, even minor sins. People take them lightly. Yeah, this is minor sin, no problem. Come on, no big deal. Don't make a big deal out of it. They take the minor sins lightly. And taking minor sins lightly, this is what leads you to the major sins. And people don't commit major sins overnight. That doesn't happen typically. What happens, people start to sin and not, be, and not worry about it. It's not a concern, no problem. This is something easy, this is something big. Everybody does this, everybody does that. This is no, no big deal, no, not a concern. They're not even thinking about it, they're not concerned about it. And then it starts building up. This is the beginning of the road that leads to major sins. People don't commit riba, don't commit zina overnight. But it is from what they see and hear which leads them to that, right? This lack of fear of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So the mu'min, the true mu'min, believe me, is the one who actually is likewise is fearful about the minor sins as he is from the major sins. And every time they sin, even a minor sin, it's a big concern. It's like a huge, heavy mountain sitting on top of them. And that's why you see, we don't say the Sahaba, and they are the best, or the scholars. They're not sinless. Nobody is. But what distinguishes them is that when they sin, ذكرullah, they will remember Allah Azza wa Jal, and they will seek forgiveness. They will keep seeking forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. They don't stay on this sin. They don't practice it regularly. They don't commit it regularly, as if they don't care. But rather, if they err, we all do, then immediately they try to rem they remember Allah Azza wa Jal, and they try to undo it and seek forgiveness from Allah Azza wa Jal. Yani they don't stick to these mi minor sins, let alone major sins, right? They said, some scholars, they said, because sticking to them, even minor sins, 
even minor sins. Being regular on them is a reason to be denied drinking from this pond. And uh, there were scholars who are with this opinion. They took it from what Allah, from what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was answered. They said, إِنَّكَ لَا تَدْرِي مَا أَحْدَثُ مِنْ بَعْدِكَ You don't know what they innovated after you. And subhanAllah, look at this. This is a deep understanding. How did they understand from this that those who are regular on sinning will be denied? Because they said the practice of the Sahaba was that if they sin, they repent. They are not regular on the sinning. So any person who is regular on sinning and committing sinning regularly, he changed. And that was not the status of the Sahaba. Allahu Akbar. That's a pretty actually deep understanding, very fine understanding of, of this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They seek forgiveness. Sahaba, they used to seek forgiveness. And they, used to, and they used to immediately seek to do the good deeds in the hope that they will undo the bad deeds. Remember? And follow the evil deeds with a good deed in the hope that it will erase it. In al hasanati yudhibna sayyat thalik dhikra lil dhakiri. May Allah make us among the dhakiri, the heed, uh, those who heed the reminder. So we shouldn't be careless about the sin, or we shouldn't be heedless about the sins, we shouldn't be regular on the sins, it should be a big thing for us, it should be a big concern. Yes, I err, but I should be actually fearful from that uh, mistake and sin, and try to undo it, and do better, and try to repent to Allah wa ta'ala, even if it is a minor sin. طيب. Let's, I think, stop here because the next topic we, we were going to actually talk, the next topic would be about how some of the groups, they actually, uh, 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 they deferred in their understanding of this Haud from the understanding of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Like we said, some groups, they denied the Haud outright. They said there is no Haud. There is absolutely no Haud. They denied it. We say it's Haud. Some others, they affirm it. They say there is Haud. But they claim that the understanding of this haud is a different understanding. And who will drink from it are different than how, what we, who we think will drink from it. The Rafida, they think that none of the Sahaba will drink from it. So their understanding is totally different than what, uh, at our understanding. And our understanding is the correct. When we say our understanding, I am, I'm, I'm referring to the understanding of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, not my personal understanding, but the understanding of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is the correct understanding and is the haqq, is the true understanding. Uh, but I think we're going to need more time, inshallah. I'd like to stop uh, so that to give opportunity to, for uh, adhan and, and uh, wudu. But I want to uh, open the door for, or the opportunity for a few questions, quick questions, inshallah. Any, anybody has questions or concern or comments? Sadr. Salaam wa rahmatullah. Yeah, no, this will actually only feed in, in, in there. So that's fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what I'm asking you, let's talk about the bidah. When you're talking about the bidah, there is a major bidah, there is a minor bidah. Now, bidah. So, when you differentiate bidah, yes. is it, uh, the bidah is only affected when a person is doing some bidah. In the deal itself, outside the deal, you okay with bidah. So the brother is asking about what he said about the bid'ah. He said, and the, he said there are obviously there is minor bid'ah and there is major bid'ah, right? Or innovations, and that is a correct understanding. Obviously, not all the, like the sins, not all the sins are as grave, right? There are major sins and there are minor sins, and even among the major sins, some of them are like really bad, right? Compared to others, and there are minor sins. Some of them are worse than others, and some of them are lighter. So obviously not all innovations are equal. And innovations in the aqidah are worse than innovations in uh, the practice, for example, etc., etc. And innovations in the knowledge is even worse than uh, innovation in the practice, in the amal, right? Uh, but with that said, obviously needless to say, what is covered in, the, in those who will be denied, definitely the major innovations, the misguiding, yani al-bida al-mudillah, those misguiding uh, major uh, innovations, especially in the aqidah and even in the uh, sharia, 
uh, definitely are covered by this. But even those who innovate the minor innovations should also be very wary. That doesn't mean that minor innovations should be okay and no big deal. We say that they are on a da grave danger as well. Because who knows, maybe they will be denied because of that. They may end up part of those who will be denied. If I want to really drink from it, then I should stay away from any innovation in the deen. Because every innovation is misguidance. Like Rasulullah said. Now, which innovation is the one that is dispraised? Every innovation from the linguistic perspective, because in the language, in the Arabic language, when you say bid'a or muhdatha, is something that is new. Wasn't there before and it's new. That covers the deen and more than the deen, just the deen. Because cars are innovation. They weren't at the time of Rasulullah. Linguistically speaking, you would say this is a bid'a, bid'a in life. Bid'a because it wasn't back in the days there were no cars, there were no microphones, there were no internet, there were no phones or tablets, etc. etc. There were no buildings like, that, like today. All of these, linguistically speaking, are called bid'a, innovations, innovations in life. Are these dispraised? What do you say? No. Otherwise, we would say now, dr driving a car is a bid'a, don't drive a car, ride a camel. <laughs> no way. Innovations in the dunya that have nothing to do with the deen, not only are not dispraised, are recommended and are something that is emphasized by the deen. We are actually asked to enhance and improve as long as there is nothing wrong, there is no concern from the sharia perspective from, from it. By all means, it makes life easier, it makes life simpler. Sure, absolutely, no big deal. Cars is a great innovation. It's a great innovation. But what is dispraised? is the innovation in the deen. That is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said in the hadith, man ahdatha fi amrina, not just ahdath, man ahdatha fi amrina, in this, matter of, in this matter of ours. What is this matter of ours? Deen. Yani deen. Man ahdatha fi amrina hadha, ma laysa min, so whoever innovates in this matter of ours, yani in the religion, that which is not from it, فَهُوَ رَدْ مَرْدُود يعني it is rejected like those who will be who innovate in the deen will be يُرَدُّون وَيُذَادُون عَنِ الْحَوْتِ so they will be rejected and they will be pushed away from الحوت so the, the innovations in the deen not in dunya and the means to actually preserve this deen is not an innovation it is from المصالح المرسلة from the beneficial means. For example, now people, whenever we talk about this, say, oh, well, how about printing the Quran? Isn't that an innovation? We said, no. Because printing the Quran isn't meant for itself. It's not a goal in itself. What is goal is to preserve the deen of people. We want people to be able to read the Quran and have the Quran readily available, accessible by people. Yani imagine we don't print the Quran. How would people be able to read, recite, memorize, and be guided by the Quran? As a matter of fact, the Sahaba, even the Sahaba themselves, they say that the greatest thing that um, uh, Abu Bakr, uh, I'm sorry, Uthman ibn Affan ever did is printing the Quran. That's why it is called now Al-Quran Al-Uthmani. Why it is called Al-Quran Al-Uthmani? Uthman ibn Affan, he is the one who actually gathered the Quran, made it one copy, and then he made seven copies and sent it to the different land of Islam. And he's reaping the benefit ever since. He is reaping the benefit ever since. This is a sadaqah jariyah until the hour. Printing the Quran in itself is a maslaha mursala because it preserves the deen of Islam, which is a goal. It is not a goal in itself. Otherwise, and this is what I gave the example the other day, we were explaining this very hadith in MSI. To, to, to be able to tell the difference, if printing, just merely printing the Qur'an was in itself a ibadah, a goal, a target, then we would say somebody just printing a million copy of Qur'an and locking it in a warehouse, that would be a, a good thing. Printing it by itself and locking it in a warehouse, a locker, is not a good, is not a good deed. Because not that, that's not the purpose, that's not the goal. The goal is to print it and distribute it to people so that they are, that it is accessible. Now, alhamdulillah, it is printed 
in, in so, so many quantities, and now the meaning is translated. You see the difference between the innovation and the beneficial means. The beneficial means. Now the hadith. Somebody is going to and then his followers going to the grave with them. And then their followers going to the grave with them. Is this a bidah? <laughs> well, it is a bidah. But is it a major bidah? I mean, like printing the Quran and printing the Hadith and everything, I think it's a, it's a, it's a good thing. It's not even a bidah for for me. Well, it's not even a bidah. It's a, yeah. It's, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, well, I'll, I'll, I'll actually answer your question by an answer, by a question. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do I get to ask? Okay. It's going to the grave. Hey, Dada? Yeah, for them, when they go to the grave, what do they do? They invoke, right? Yeah. They invoke this diseased person, yeah. regardless of who he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is dua ibadah or not? Ibadah. Should the ibadah be directed to other than Allah Azza wa Jal? In other, in, let me rephrase it. Does anybody other than Allah Azza wa Jal deserve any type of ibadah? I think that answers the question. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is al-mustahiq. Wahdahu subhanahu wa ta'ala lil-ibadah. Huwa al-mustahiq. He is the one who deserves al-ibadah. And nobody else, not a close angel, not a sent messenger, not a wali, not a nobody. scholar, nobody deserves al-ibadah. Any act of worship. Except Allah Azza wa Jal. He is the only one who deserves so anybody who directs any part, any part of al ibadah to other than Allah Azza wa Jal, then he, he is equating with Allah Azza wa Jal. So that's more than America. This is more than bid'ah, actually. <laughs> that wouldn't be a bid'ah, just bid'ah. This is, would be shirk, wal-iyadhu billah. Shirk al-du'a. Naam. Wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum. So what about nah. if you are praying behind him? Is it allowed? Behind what, who? So the guy who is doing this kind of thing. Well, he is misguiding them. Yeah, I mean, you know, and they are misguided by him. He's performing the shirk, and then you think you can fall this way. See, this is the big controversy. I mean, you know, yeah. I don't want to be scared, yeah. you know, fighting with the, shit, the groups and things like yeah. that. Maybe we'll talk. Insha yeah, let's, uh, let's, talk, let's leave it at this, inshallah. We, we, if you want, we can ask this next week, inshallah. هذا والله أعلم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. وياك بارك.